The research shows that as income rises, graduation rates, annual wages, and health status improve, and at the same time the need for public assistance and, and arrest records for men and pregnancy rates for young moms, for teenage women, go dra down drastically. If you go from um, poverty level wages to double the poverty um, level, um, pregnancy rates for young women go down by 40%. Arrest records for men go down by half. Um, annual income doubles. So so annual wages are an important piece of this pie. According to Wilder research, only 2% of St. Paul residents with full-time year-round jobs live bef below the poverty line, versus 25% of people with part-time jobs and 39% of people with no job at all. And in case you didn't know this, this should really make you feel good about what you're doing. Um, the national average for the estimated value of volunteer time is $24.69 an hour. In Minnesota, it's $27.58 an hour. That's the value of your time. At daily work, the aggregate of the contributions by volunteers is in excess of $175,000 a year, according to that number. And that's pretty significant when you think that our entire expense budget in 2017 was $133,000. We at Reading Partners try to use an asset-based approach to learning. We believe that every student can succeed. In addition, we believe that every teacher and parent wants what is best for the student and is doing what they can to help them succeed. A core belief of mine is that we can learn from kids just as much as they can learn from us. And this is important because it really motivates me and I think can motivate uh, volunteer tutors to really genuinely be inquisitive and uh, build authentic relationships with our students. We want the tutor to be inquisitive and, and ask questions about the student, and we want the student to ask questions of the tutor as well. Uh, it's not just a one-way street in building relationships, um, and for that authenticity to really take hold, we want, um, we want that curiosity on both the student and the tutor part, and we want to provide that space uh, throughout the year for students and tutors to really uh, to interact, to engage um, in authentic ways. Uh, as Andrew said, learning can't happen without that trust and that um, sense of mentorship really coming through and so that's an uh, equally important part for us uh, and for the tutor and the student to build um, on top of the literacy skills and the activities that they're doing around reading. We can't build a relationship if we just talk about math equations or just talk about phonics or books. Uh, have to build a relationship by what are, uh, finding out what are their interests, what do they find funny, what do they like in school, what do they like in their personal lives, what kind of things do they value. Uh, and with this, by like centering what, uh, spending time finding their interests and centering what gives them joy in life, uh, that joy becomes part of your relationship and they'll start to also engage with you. Well, I'm, I was interested in this uh, building relationships and building trust and um, you know, use every chance to get to know your student. I have a student who views such efforts as an invasion of her privacy. Um, you know, I'll say, how was school? Good. What did you do? You don't really need to know that. <laughs> and it, it stops me in my tracks. I don't know what to do after that. So does anybody have any suggestions? When in doubt, I try to, I think it's best to be transparent. And so with a student that I'm having a conversation like that with, I might say like, sorry, I'm not intending to cross any boundaries. I'm hoping to get to know you more and build a relationship and build some trust. What are some things that you feel comfortable talking about with me? What are some things that you would like to talk about? We get students who come into GED class who didn't have a great school experience um, and will come in and are very much like I'm not here to chit chat I'm here to study for my GED um, and I mean in some cases with adults we say that's great let's uh, let's start studying for your GED but I mean we just try to spend a lot of time doing goal setting and we'll say if if GED is your goal um, so now let's talk about you're gonna have to pass a math test you're gonna have to pass a social studies test you're going to have to pass a science test and a language arts test in each of these areas. Where do you feel comfortable? Um, 
like what do you think about math? What's uh, what's been your experience with math? Which of these areas do you feel most comfortable in? And maybe why why do you like that area? And if somebody says, oh, I kind of like history, then that can be an area to to draw more material from. This is uh, from John 15, and it's Jesus talking. And Jesus says, I have a commandment for you, right? That you love one another as I have first loved you. And then there's a part that's kind of sobering, right? That um, I'm talking about the kind of love that's going to go all the way. That could even be self-sacrificial to the point of death. Um, and so that's an important part of this understanding of friendship or this understanding of this relationship. And then in the passage, Jesus says, and I call you no longer servants, but friends. And for a long time, I've been really interested in this shift um, from this language of service or being a servant to being a friend. Uh, we talk about community service. We have had in academic settings service learning opportunities for a long time. A lot of religious organizations talk about how they're servants or they serve other people. And this passage really encourages a different image, a different model, the model of friendship. 